afternoon's meeting of the Public Accounts Committee. <coughs> Members, Public Accounts Committee rules are that mobile phones must be set to airplane mode and turned off. It's not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the Assembly recording. The session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed via live online streaming either on the Assembly website or Democracy Live. And can I just say to members who are joining us remotely, could you please mute um, yourselves until you are called to speak so that we don't get any background noise or interference? Is obviously, that can affect the recording. Um, any apologies this afternoon, Clark? No. Okay. Agenda item two, then, is the minutes of the 6th of May 2021, which are pages 6 to 15 of your pack. Are members content that I sign these minutes as being accurate? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. I'll sign them with your permission. Great, thank you. Okay, agenda item three then is the declaration of uh, members' interests. <coughs> members at each meeting, members are required to register relevant financial and other interests in the members' interests. Any members any interests who wish to clear this afternoon? Okay, thank you. Agenda item four then is matters arising. Any members any matters they wish to raise from the minutes that we've just agreed? <coughs> no. Agenda item five then, correspondence. Um, uh, members, I refer to correspondence dated 6th of May 2021, pages 21 and 22 of your pack from Sue Gray, the Accounting Officer and Permanent Secretary of the Department of Finance, regarding recruitment for key commercial and procurement rules within her department. The recruitment exercises uh, are to fill two key rules, grade three rules in the Department of Finance, i.e. one, Chief Executive Construction and Procurement Delivery, and two, Commercial Director. The job adverts have been advertised widely, including with uh, social media, uh, LinkedIn, and with external organisations, including the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply. Ms Gray is aiming to maximise the opportunity to transform the public procurement process and hopes for a strong field of candidates. Ms Gray will provide further updates in due course. Are members content to note? I think that the simple reason we're getting that is that obviously Ms Gray is proving to us that she's carrying out the recommendations that we have uh, set out in, in uh, our inquiry report, which is good and that's refreshing. Um, members refer to correspondence in the 6th of May 2021, pages 23 to 25 of your pack from uh, Russell Smith, partner in KPMG, regarding the evidence session of the 22nd of April 2021 on generating electricity from renewable energy. Um, members agree that um, KPMG will be asked to come in front of the committee for a further follow-up session. Agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Um, Okay. Members, I refer to a memo from the Audit Office on the 11th of May 2021, your table pack at page 4, regarding a report on estimates of Northern Ireland Audit Office and Public Northern Ireland Public uh, Services Ombudsman 2021-22, brackets NIA 95-17-22. The conclusion at the end of the report states that the report therefore gives effect to the committee's function of laying the estimates of the Northern Ireland Audit Office and NIPSO before the Assembly. The Audit Committee will forward the estimates to the Department of Finance for inclusion within the main estimates for 2021-22. This committee just asked to note that. Members agreed? Okay, thank you. Members, I refer, refer to correspondence from Ms Sue Gray dated the 13th of May 2021 in your table pack, pages 5 to 8, regarding localised restriction support scheme over payments. This is a follow-up from Ms Gray's correspondence of the 13th of April 2021 and includes a table with the details of the current overpayments and at NXA a breakdown of 51 businesses who were not eligible. <coughs> the total value of all payments issued in uh, error still to be re recovered is £5,263,000. £5, uh, this is 1.7 of the overall value of all payments issued through the LRSS to date, and Ms Gray will continue to keep the committee updated. Mr Donnelly, have you any comments you want to make on that? Uh, sorry, I don't think I've seen that one yet. All oh, right, um, okay. 
I will comment on it once. Okay. Any members, any comment? All agreed? Content to note. Thank you. Okay. Members, we will remain in open session to consider ministerial directions. Um, having said that, it's my understanding that there are none that we are going to look at today. Is that right, Mr. There's Brown? none today, but there's a huge number on their way you know, mm. over the next few weeks from a range of departments, uh, not just economy, uh, era, and health. So there's uh, there's quite a cluster of them. Uh, we'll get them to you uh, okay. in the next few weeks. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, members, <clears throat> as Mr. Donnelly has just said, when we move to agenda item six, then ministerial directions. This week we have no ministerial directions to consider, but we will have a number to look back um, next week due to the backlog. Uh, however, a list of ministerial directions has been published today by the Department of Finance, which has been since forwarded to you. The list contained the document reflect those ministerial directions which have been made by all departments and have been notified to the Comptroller and Auditor General and discussed with the Public Accounts Committee. Members, content to note? Can I just welcome the fact that they have published it as increased transparency of this issue. That's something that this committee has thought. Yeah. Okay. I would add, Mary Chair, I think it's, it's, it's not to pat ourselves on the back, but it's, it wouldn't have happened if we hadn't raised it and pushed it. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Um, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, you will then have seen, of course, just raises an issue in my head. Uh, there was some media coverage in the, uh, of the press release re we released last week in relation to uh, our um, response to the recommendations that have been embraced fully by the Education Authority uh, in terms of the special educational needs. And I was at a meeting with a party colleague yesterday with the chief executive of the EA about other issues, and I, I, did, I did thank them. Uh, for for doing that. I think it is always good when we as a committee produce uh, reports and, and conduct inquiries uh, on the back of work which the Northern Ireland Audit Office have done, uh, then it is good that whenever we have that positive response from uh, government department, departments or government agencies, and, and that, that is something to be welcomed. Okay. Um, Okay, members, so with your agreement then, we will now go into closed session for the final consideration of our report inquiry <coughs> into Driver Vehicle Agency 2019-2020. Um, if you're in agreement, agreed? Agreed. 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 This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 30.